Now we begin to actually dismantle or disbind the book. We need to find the inner segment of the first section. Now I see exposed thread here. That's a good sign. However, I cannot see the loops. So I'm going to distrust this first inclination and go a little deeper into the book. I'm looking for exposed thread. The uh, beginning and end uh, of any uh, sewn book is always difficult to establish the center of the signatures because uh, you are dealing with the shoulder, which is the most severely crimped. You can see that is the most severely crimped of the whole uh, collection of signatures. Uh, so, opening them flat is problematic at best. One trick you can use, besides looking for signature uh, uh, signs and uh, counting, besides doing that, go to where you hope more or less the interior is, the, uh, and just lift at the end, just lift the paper, uh, the page, and see where it divides. This is obviously, no question about it, even though right now I cannot see exposed thread, you know for a fact that is the center of the first signature. So, given that, here again, this is fairly typical. This would appear to be, I was going to say saddle stitched, first uh, several signatures and the last several signatures were going from the back uh, forward in this case. You could go either way. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It looks particularly pinched here, which uh, sometimes indicates overstitching, saddle stitching. Uh, they did do that for strength in some books. Perhaps not this. Perhaps this is just poorly sewn. I'm going to try to cut. There you go. Cut these. It is overstitched. I was right. All right. So we just cut these loops here. Try to stay in camera. And... Then we should be able there. Now we can truly open this signature. And there is the exposed thread. You can see it right there and right there. Now, all we need to do is cut. And then we release the signature gently. We tease it away from the text block. Why on earth would you cut perfectly good string or thread? Well, it's not perfectly good. It's, first of all, about 150 years old, uh, and it's just a matter of time. Rule of thumb with most any book, the weak point is the hinge, the outer hinge, especially if it's leather. That's going to go usually first. The second thing that goes, it's not the paper, it's not the ink, it's the thread. The thread is what actually holds every signature together, as you know. Once the thread goes, uh, it's game over. The signatures become loose, literally independent of the text block. They start to creep forward every time the book is opened. They creep forward a little more. You get tattered foredge. You've seen a thousand examples, I'm sure. So the thread has to be replaced. There's only one way to do that, and that's with re-sewing. So we cut the thread without guilt, and this signature should be able to be teased apart. 
and now I'm starting there's the signature mark make sure you can see that in this case it's TT a brief word about signature marks <coughs> publisher uh, I was going to say binders it's not binders it's publishers printers used every imaginable combination of letters and numbers typically it is letters it is capital letters you go through the alphabet you think 27 28 times no there was in Victorian times uh, well into the 20th century it's my understanding there were no J's and there were no W's so rule of thumb figure 25 signatures per uh, set of alphabet letters. When you get to the end, when you get to Z, you begin again, but with a double letter. So the 20, in this case, let's say, for the sake of argument, let's say the 20 sixth signature is AA. Here we have TT. That means they've gone through the alphabet twice up to T. You do the math. I'm guessing 40, 45, give or take, uh, signatures. That's important when you're assessing a book. You need to know how many signatures you're going to be dealing with. That's a very important factor for trying to guesstimate how long this job is going to take you. You go to the end of the book, you look for a signature mark. You see TT, and also based on just a, a brief glimpse of uh, the signature ends, that looks about right. That looks to be 35 to 40 signatures. So then you have a more realistic basis by which to assess the cost, the number of hours it's going to take. Now, as you see, I am teasing this away. This is not, in fact, the last signature. It turns out to be the second to the last. We apply as little pressure off the spine <coughs> as possible to prevent uh, or to assist minimum wear and tear on the edge of the last <coughs> sheet in a signature. Now we clean this off of all obvious and apparent paste residue. To assess this, th there is a signature. That's TT signature of this book. Pages 641 to 656. To assess the signature per se and its competence to withstand another rebinding, we take the outer leaf, and if there's any doubt in our mind, we hold it up to the light and look for any severe wear spots or in fact tears. I would adjudge this particular piece to be substantial enough to withstand another uh, binding, rebacking without the necessity for tissue repair. If there were severe comp uh, if there was severe compromising, if there if half of it was separated or uh, for any reason. Uh, the, re uh, the way you would uh, do that, I'm sure we'll run across examples later somewhere in this book and we'll show you uh, tissue repair. Uh, actually it's tissue reinforcement usually because repair would represent two separate pages. Normally it would be reinforcement. So I'm saying that is good enough and clean enough that can be re-sewn. 
Nothing else need be done with this. Some purists insist on pressing everything flat and clean and beginning again, right from scratch. The problem with that is you then, after you sew it, you then have to reback it and try to achieve more or less the same curve of spine. If you don't, the foredge is going to be ragged in the book as opposed to an originally clean foredge. That's almost imp <coughs> impossible to do, certainly problematic. If you don't do anything to a signature, if you don't have to, once you've disbound it and cleaned it, just set it aside in order, in strict order. When you re-sew it, that curve will fit in the next, it will be juxtaposed as it normally would have been originally, and you will reachieve the original curve, therefore reachieving the original smoothness of foredge. That's a nice, nice thing to be able to do. And it's also the quickest and easiest added advantage. Now we're just going to do a couple more signatures. We will see. There's the over sewing. They did that. I've already cut the uh, threads, of course. But they did this uh, saddle stitching, uh, going through the each page as opposed to going through the fold. Uh, they did that for extra substance at the beginning and end of uh, books. Typically, I, it's not unusual. Many books don't have that. Uh, at any rate, this is easily overcome. It only affects typically the first couple of uh, signatures. Uh, you just It's just a matter of cutting the threads and then uh, dealing with them. Once they're cut, they're not, not a problem. Now here is the actual last signature. Normally in this book, this book was, I'll, I'll say two loops. Uh, there's other ways of describing it, but you may have noticed in the previous signature, the second signature we disbound, uh, the second in the, in the second from the end, this is the last uh, signature at the end of the book. The second from the last only had two loops of thread. You will find that throughout the book. The book itself is going to be basically two loops that will have to be cut in every signature. Now this is the very last signature and this is very typical of, of uh, 19th century binding. This has complete loops, I mean literally from top to bottom. Again, they did this for added uh, strength, for added uh, tensile strength, uh, because the first and last signatures of course get the main wear, or so it was believed at the point, at that uh, time. So we simply, again, cut the thread, and tease it, make sure you're teasing the signature. There is UU following TT, so we know for a fact that is the last signature. And we simply, once the threads are cut, we simply, if there's any, any problem at all, we cut. We don't ask questions because you do not want to the paper if you don't absolutely positively have to. Now we clean a little of the excess off. It's actually not too bad. This would be described, this uh, marble piece would technically be described as the rear flyleaf as opposed to its match, the rear paste down. The rear paste down will remain on the original board. We've already made a flap for it. Uh, and 
ultimately it will be joined and there will be a piece of probably beige uh, restoration paper uh, where the uh, gap appears on the inner hinge of the rear and the front, too, for that matter. Um, it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be seamless, but it'll be more or less aesthetically acceptable. Now, this uh, fly leaves, by and large, or that's half of an end paper. End papers, by and large, are attached to the first and last signatures by tipping on with adhesive only, which is to say a tiny bead of adhesive was originally applied to the folded end paper, and it was applied, and that's what held it on, <clears throat> and that's it. It's amazing this uh, flyleaf held onto this over all these years with all the wear and tear as well as it has because it was just a tiny bead of adhesive uh, hold, holding it together. Now, make sure there's absolutely no undue residue here of the original adhesive and that is ready when the time comes to be reattached to its brother or sister as it were its sibling uh, in the final stages of the rebinding now here is the very last signature again we want to make sure all the residue is off and again how do you know well it's basically sense of feel it won't take you long to develop a finely tuned sense of should that be there shouldn't it now that feels clean however visually I can see there is adhesive residue <coughs> from where this end paper was tipped on. That has to come off. So we use a pairing motion and since the paper itself has not substantially deteriorated, we're just going to more or less pair and flick the of off like so. Now what I should be doing is really taking my time, taking this outer sheet off, putting it on a hard flat surface, a cutting surface, and maybe even ironing it flat and using the pairing motion on a perfectly flat piece of paper which this is far from. On the other hand it's not that big a deal and again this is practical book restoration you do cut corners whenever and wherever possible because half the battle is giving your client a first-rate job at a reasonable, affordable price. Well, it's still going to be very expensive, but relatively reasonable price. Now, there is our first signature without the end paper. Let us see what we're dealing with. Okay, that's tipped on. Now, here is an extra sheet put on between the end of the last signature and the end paper. Why? I'm not sure, but it's a blank sheet. Okay. 
they didn't want to end the book with a printed piece. They wanted a blank piece between this and the end paper. That's fine. This is tipped on. That needs to be guarded. So we pull this apart. There is severe residue here from the tipping. And again, we just very lightly use our palette knife as a plain, a single bevel plain type of tool. And we dry strip, which is another word for dry stripping being the uh, usually preferred alternative to uh, using moisture to dissolve or to mm -hmm. soften the uh, adhesive. Uh, now, there we go. That is severely compromised. That definitely needs Japanese repair tissue, a thin strip. It's called guarding. Uh, well, it's called reinforcing. Uh, applied with um, wheat flour paste, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. So that definitely needs attention. Here is a single leaf for aesthetic and ideological reasons. We are going to reattach this. However, instead of just tipping it on with a tiny bead of adhesive, we're going to do it properly. We're going to guard it. Guarding involves a strip of uh, paper or tissue, uh, long fibered, uh, acid free of course. I use a standard uh, three quarter inch there's really no rule on it. I found three-quarter inch being more or less universal. Half of the three-quarter inch piece of, in this case, heavy tissue. It'll be opaque, but it doesn't matter because you don't have to read any text or anything through it. Uh, half of the strip will be attached to this, uh, would be this side, the underside, where the original adhesive occurred. And the other half will be attached to, uh, will be wrapped around and attached to the uh, adjoining signature. Therefore, when you open the book, this will be reinforced, but also this next page will be independent of, it'll open flat, it'll be independent of the end paper, it'll be independent of the signature, the, the uh, adjoining signature. And that's the best uh, you could hope for. Now, what I'm going to do is one more signature. We'll review. Make sure there's no undue adhesive residue here. Uh, we're going to review one more time, and then we're going to cut to the next stage because from now on it's going to be very repetitive. A book this size could easily take, even someone with experience, it could easily take an hour, an hour and a half to go through each signature, tease it off like so, clean it and assess it and then set it aside and go to the next one. It's uh, one of the reasons hand restoration is expensive work. There you go. Now that's fairly straightforward. That, I hope, is what the rest of the book is like. And we'll just to double check, we'll take the outer bifoliate sheet off, check it. That looks pretty good. That's, that's certainly... Uh, that's certainly presentable. So we'll call that good. And hopefully when you see me next, it'll be no more than an hour later. And we'll be on to the next. Oh, here's one last thing. This is from Signature UU. Uh, 
this is very typical of sig signature marks. In this case, a signature comprises four leaves, which is eight, I'm sorry, four sheets, eight leaves, 16 pages. The outer leaf has the signature mark on it, UU. This is the second page in. It says UU2. That's very typical. It's for, again, for binding purposes to make sure there's no mess-ups, that everything is in its rightful place. Uh, disregard it, per se. On the other hand, if you're ever at a loss, there are times when you don't have page numbers or various weirdness happens, and you may be at a loss as to where this actually should be in a book. It happens. Uh, if you have a secondary signature mark, that could well help in your placement.